All right, welcome to episode two of chapter nine. And in this uh, episode, we're going to cover the details of aerobic respiration. Now, remember, aerobic respiration has three different steps. And these steps would be step one, glycolysis. Step two, the Krebs cycle. And then step three, the electron transport chain. All right. Uh, we're going to talk about glycolysis first. I want you to remember that glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm, and it has three products. You see where it says produces, produces, and produces. You've got three molecules of ATP. I'm sorry, two molecules of ATP. And let's use this color. And this will be used by the cell. All right. So this is going to go out into the cell. It's going to be used to do transcription, translation, build the cytoplasm, uh, break down some molecules, or whatever. All right. Now, these next guys, the NADH, these are high energy electrons. And in fact, NAD is a electron carrier. So think of NAD as being like a dump truck. And then when it's NADH, that dump, dump truck is full. And so this dump truck is full of high energy electrons. So where are these guys going to go? They're going to go to the electron transport chain. And then they're going to be used to make ATP. So these high energy electrons are going to do a lot for us later. In fact, the most important thing that's made during glycolysis is this NADH. All right, the second one is pyruvic acid. Pyruvic acid can also be referred to as pyruvate. Those are the same thing. So pyruvic acid and pyruvate. Uh, this is a three carbon compound that's going to move on to the Krebs cycle. All right, so if you look down here at this picture, it tells you what's going on. Now remember, glycolysis, here we go. Glycolysis, the word means to break sugar. And glucose is a sugar, and you can tell that by the OSE. So in the first step, you need to use two ATP. Think of these ATP as the activation energy. So you need to spin these two guys to get this party started. Now, once this party gets started, you're going to make four ATP. So you used up two ATP. You gained four. So what was your profit or your net? Okay, so 4 minus 2 equals 2 ATP. So your total production of ATP is 2. All right, so this is your pyruvic acid. And remember, it's going to go to the Krebs. This is going to be used by the cell. So whatever cell product it wants to get done. And then this NADH it is going to go to the electron transport chain. All right. That is glycolysis, as simple as you can make it. All right, our next step is the Krebs cycle. And if you can remember, the Krebs cycle is made, it occurs in the mitochondria. And you remember your mitochondria structure, you got the squiggly inner membrane. The matrix is this space right inside. All right, so this is going to occur in the matrix. It's also known as the citric acid cycle because citric acid is temporarily made during this process. And it actually produces four things. Number one, one molecule of ATP. And once again, that will be used by the cell to do whatever cell product it needs to get done. Number two, NADH, remember high energy electrons, those will go to the ETC, as you can see written right here. The third one is, a cousin of NADH, FADH2. Once again, FAD is another dump truck. When it's full, it's in a FADH2, and it will also go to the ETC. And then our fourth product is carbon dioxide, which is a waste product. Whenever you guys breathe out, you're breathing out carbon dioxide that was produced by the Krebs cycle. All right, now you see the stuff in pink right down here? The number one job is to make these high energy electrons because these high energy electrons are going to go to ETC and they're going to make a lot 
of ATP. Most of the 36 ATP that is made by cellular respiration occurs in the electron transport chain. So let's go on to the details of the electron transport chain. Remember, this one occurs in the inner membrane of the mitochondria. So remember, the mitochondria has this shape. It's got the squiggly line. That inner membrane is the squiggly, squiggly line right there. And the folds are called Christi. All right, electrons are delivered by NADH and FADH2. And then these electrons are going to travel down a chain of proteins. And these electrons are then going to be used to make water. Oxygen is used during this step of the electron transport chain. Now, the movement of electrons is going to pump hydrogens across the membrane. And what you're going to make is what is called a proton gradient. Because a hydrogen ion is a simple, essentially a proton. Now, when you hear the word gradient, you should remember diffusion when you go from high to low because that's going to come into play here. Now these hydrogens as they move across the membrane have to go through an enzyme called ATP synthase. Synth means to make. Okay, now ATP synthase makes ATP. Remember you make 36 ATP, 24 of those bad boys are made at the electron transport chain. All right, we got a picture coming up, and this picture is going to be used to explain. Now, I am going to write all over this picture, and I highly suggest that you do the same. This is really going to help you with a couple of your assignments. All right, all right, so let's just make sure that we remember what's going on here. This is the matrix, so this is the very, very inside, and remember the Krebs occurred right here. This is the inner membrane itself. And this is where the electron transport chain is going to occur. And then the inner membrane space, this is between the inner membrane and then what would be out here, which would be the outer membrane. All right, so here you should have a little bit of your map of the um, mitochondria. And remember, this is your mitochondria. All right, so matrix, ETC, inner membrane space right there. All right, so where did this NAD plus come from? I'm sorry, NADH, that came from the Krebs. Okay, where did the FADH2 come from? That came from the Krebs. Okay, now, when, oh, I'm, I'm, I got ahead of myself here. These uh, blue circles, bluish purple, these are proteins. They have names, but we don't really need to worry about them, okay? These proteins are the actual ETC itself. So this is the chain of proteins of which the electron will move from one to another to another. All right, so when NADH drops off an electron to the first protein in the chain, it turns into NADH. But it's also going to leave behind that hydrogen. So this NAD plus here will go back to the Krebs cycle. And the same thing is going to happen to FAD. It's going to drop off some hydrogens. And then this guy is going to go back to the Krebs cycle. Just pick up truck, going back, delivering it, going back, delivering. All right, so what happens to these electrons? This electron is going to move from protein to protein to protein to protein. And as it does that, those hydrogens right here, they're going to move into the inner membrane space. So you keep pumping all of these hydrogens in. So what's going to happen is you're going to have a high concentration of hydrogen ions out here. Okay, so now we're, we're creating this proton gradient. We have high on the outer membrane space. We have low down in here. The only way that these hydrogens can get back to the matrix is they have to go through this enzyme called ATP synthase. Now every time a hydrogen flies through ATP synthase, the bottom of it clicks once. And each click provides enough energy to turn ADP into ATP. So remember, it's ATP synthase. It's synthesizing ATP. All right.
Now, we've got a problem. Let's go back over here. If we have an electron stop right here, the whole chain is going to quit. Imagine that you're sitting at the lunch, and you're in the lunch line, and somebody is at the cash register ready to pay, and they don't ever move. They just stop. The whole lunch line stops. We need that person at the cash register to get up and leave. Well, the only way this electron's going to leave is if this electron lands on the, on the oxygen. This is the only way or the only reason that we breathe in oxygen to do this step. Now, when this oxygen gains an electron, it's going to become negative. This negative particle will be attracted to this positive particle. Positive plus a negative, put those together, there's your water, there's your waste. Okay? Now, we're stealing away some hydrogens here. Remember, they're always being replaced as you get back here. So there's plenty of that stuff in here. All right, now that seems really complicated, but what you want to get out of this is these electrons move down the chain, they pump out hydrogens, the hydrogens get back in by going through ATP synthase, that makes ATP. The electrons hop on the oxygen, which then in turn will turn into water. All right? If you have any questions, don't hesitate to come up to the Genius Bar anytime during class. All right, that will, oh, we got one more thing we want to take care of. This is really just a review. Notice that we're going to make 36 total ATP. A few of them are made during the Krebs and glycolysis, but most of them are made down here at this ETC part. Okay, remember, your grand total is 36. All right, this will conclude podcast number two from chapter nine. One more to go.